Auntie Ashes and Goals. If you're new on this channel, I'm inviting you to subscribe to the channel, like the videos and share with your friends and maintain safe workplaces. Today we're talking about working at height, which is one of the major causes of fatalities in workplaces. The International Labour Organization has identify the construction industry as the number one workplace with the most fatalities or serious injuries uh, due to working on heights. Working on heights is everywhere, including the offices. So it's in the construction industry, mining, in the warehouse, in storage places, in the medical field, it's everywhere. The definition though of working at heights is being in a place or working in a place where a person could fall from one level to another. So it's about falling from a level to another. So it does not include slipping and falling at the same level. It does not include slipping and falling at the same level. So it has to be from one level to another, just like that. Um, so working at height means in some cases or most cases actually two meters or more above ground uh, but as I have stated before any height that is below two meters can also be fatal and cause serious injuries so this definition is according to most this is one of the most legal definitions that you can find um, being stated by many countries okay a height two meters or more okay because they presume that if someone falls from a height less than two meters they might get injuries but not really fatalities but however as an HSC practitioner with 10 years experience in the field um, it depends on where you fall how you fall or the condition of the place where you're falling into if it is called spikes and stuff like that whoosh, might be very 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 serious okay so um before you train your employees about working at height you need to make sure that your employees have had working at height medical examination using or by a verified or trained occupational health medical practitioner okay so they must check a person for one two three items that can um, hinder someone from working at any height all right then the second thing is uh, you must make sure that your employees must be trained on how to work at heights trained on how to use personal safety um, protection equipment like harnesses and the use of safety lines so there are just basically five rules you must follow when you have employees who are working at heights the first one is to use a platform with guards or handrails make sure that your handrails are permanently fixed or strongly fixed because in case we don't have safety or lifelines it means that when someone is using a personal safety protection equipment like a safety harness they tie that to the handrail so they must be really strong and be fixed the second thing is use of fall arrest equipment in conjunction with personal fall protection equipment so having two twos or three trees is better than having just a single protection system so a double protection system is the best or triple protection system is best if one fails the other might actually work to save a life um, so make sure everything is up to standard you have the best for arrest equipment if you have a construction site make sure you put in the safety nails are um, safety nets actually around the infrastructure that you are building so that it can catch anyone who slips um, so those safety harnesses or personal safety equipment must be suitable for the job that you're doing okay I've seen in places where people are working on a roof there's no lifeline or safety line 
So people actually work with the safety harness, but if you look at the safety harness and the height from the ground, uh, it's like there's nothing. A, a, an employee can actually fall from that roof to the uh, to the ground or to the floor. So you have to make sure that the system actually works. It's suitable for that place. So if you have a roof, you can have an adjustable personal fall protection equipment or fall arrest equipment that is tied to your safety harness or to the back of your safety harness. In case you slip or fall, uh, you can be caught in mid air. So an adjustable one is the best for a place like a roof because an employee sometimes need to move about. So it will be tiresome. In fact, people skip that protection part because um, the issue of going about tying in the time, tying in the time, here and there, every two minutes, it can be really stressing to employees. The third rule to follow is having regular inspection of personal equipment or group for arrest equipment. And your handrails, your guards, everything must be inspected by a competent person. We can actually say this is not fit for use or this is fit for use. Um, it's very important. Mm, in some countries, there is a government inspector who comes in to uh, check on those items and certify them as safe to use for your employees. Um, and in almost all countries, working at heights is hot work. It's permitted, so you need to have a competent person to actually give you a permit to work at a height because you would have fulfilled all the other mandatory um, rules before you can be given that permit. Um, the last one is having risk assessment and emergency rescue procedures ready or available in that workplace in case someone falls at a height. Risk assessments are so important because when you do risk assessment, you have to do them practically, not just theoretically, like just ticking, tick, 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 safe, 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 safe. That's not how you do it. Doing it actually, or just doing it really step by step, can actually save a life. You'll actually notice when you inspect some areas that this area is not safe enough. So this is it about working at heights. Make sure you protect your employees from fatalities and serious injuries due to 